Citroen's C5 Aircross is, according to its maker, the most comfortable SUV on the market. Quite a claim, given that this isn't a large luxury crossover, but is targeted at family buyers currently considering volume mid-size models in this class, like Ford's Cougar and Volkswagen's Tiguan. This revised version gets a more assertive look and higher equipment levels. Plus, its smarter cabin is still one of the most spacious and flexible on the market. Set off in a C5 Aircross, and one of the first things that Citroen hopes you'll notice is the impressive ride quality, embellished by a clever progressive hydraulic cushions suspension system, which delivers class-leading comfort over poorer surfaces. Hydraulic dampers cushion the top and bottom of wheel travel and allow the fitment of softer springs and dampers, producing what the brand describes as a magic carpet-like feel. Thick quilted advanced comfort front seats further embellish the feeling of Gallic luxury. The inevitable flip side of that is that there's a little more roll through the bends than you get from an obvious class rival. But if you can ignore this, there's actually more grip and traction than you'd think though the somewhat over-light electric steering does its best to disguise the fact. Talking of grip, buyers can specify an optional advanced grip control package that offers grippier tyres, hill assist descent control and extra driving modes tailored to different types of terrain. If you found the look of the original C5 Aircross slightly quirky, then you might appreciate what Citroen describes as the stronger, more elegant look of this updated version. You'll have already spotted that virtually all the significant visual changes lie here at the front with its reinterpreted central double chevron badging positioned below the high-set clamshell bonnet. Look carefully and you'll see more little chevrons integrated neatly into both upper and lower grilles. The V-shaped LED daytime running light signature gives the front lights higher tech 3D effect while this lower aluminium skid plate and these vertical corner intakes supply a more assertive vibe. From the side, you're reminded that this C5 Aircross is a five-seat design, but quite a large one. As before, the most striking profile feature is this chrome C-pillar that wraps around the rear side window and aims to emphasise this design's spacious interior. The colour personalised panels that Citroen's dispense with at the front are still available here in dark chrome, anodised bronze, glossy black or anodised blue, surrounding the most forward-facing of these so-called air bumps on the lower side sill, which are supposed to protect the side of the car from low-speed parking bumps. Changes at the rear are limited to the smoked lenses added to these 3D LED tail lights, which offer a distinctively high-tech nighttime illuminated signature. Time to take a seat inside. Get comfortable and you'll find yourself in a cabin that certainly feels more modern and sophisticated than before, though not too much has actually changed. The main differences are found on the centre stack where the unusual buttress-like vertical vents that used to flank the previously rather small 8-inch central infotainment screen have been banished. To make way for this larger 10-inch monitor now sighted on top of the horizontal vents that, sadly for a Citroen, look a good deal more conventional. Overall though, given the need to base the whole cabin on existing hardware, Citroen's designers have done pretty well to give it such an air of individuality. Around the dash, black leather effect material and chrome touches move the ambience of this facelifted model up market. And for the auto versions most customers will choose, there's now a smaller e-toggle gear selector. As before, the aspect of this interior we most like is found with the generously proportioned advanced comfort front seats. They feature particularly broad bases, foam that's 15mm thicker than usual for extra support, plus extra quilted padding to create an inviting visual signature that doesn't disappoint once you squish yourself into place. There's standard lumbar support too. And another thing that didn't really need changing is this 12.3 inch configurable instrument screen. And there's plenty of cabin storage space. Time to take a seat in the rear. 
Once inside, the key thing to note is what Citroen rightly claims to be the most modular reach bench arrangement in the class, by which they mean an MPV-like format of three individual seats rather than the usual bench with an uncomfortably raised middle section. This is another of the things that might really sell us this car. The three seats can individually recline in five positions from 19 through to 26 and a half degrees and slide back and forth over a range of 150 millimeters to improve either rear luggage space or legroom. Impressively, that functionality extends to this hybrid model, which stores its battery below the floor here. And out back, well, on our way to the boot, we'll once again reference the fact that Citroen hasn't felt it necessary to offer a seven-seat option in this sector. But that at least means that you should be able to expect a generously sized boot, so let's see. The tailgate's easy to lift up, so you don't really need the electric operation we've got here, something only supplied as standard right at the top of the range, complete with functionality that can be activated with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper if you find yourself approaching the car laden down with bags. For effective use of the trunk space, there are tie-down points onto which a luggage net can be clipped, plus there's a 12-volt socket. Bag hooks have been omitted though, as have seat retraction sidewall catches, which means that to push down the seat backs, you have the faff of walking round to the side of the car and pulling on the little straps provided with each individual seat. On the plus side, the three-way equal split means that you can, if necessary, just push forward the centre chair, allowing you to easily transport longer items like skis without disturbing a couple of rear-seated passengers. Talking of long items, another thing Citroen hasn't thought to provide is a fold-flat front passenger seat option. The brand thinks that with up to 1.9 metres of cargo length on offer, you shouldn't need that, perhaps. The total capacity figure certainly shouldn't disappoint, up to 1,630 litres of space being on offer from the flat seats retracted cargo area. It's 1,510 litres with this hybrid model. In an SUV market as crowded as this one, any mainstream product simply has to bring something different to the table. Fortunately, this C5 Aircross has. This car's emphasis on comfort won't endear it to magazine road testers or people who, rather mystifyingly, want their family SUV to handle with sporting sharpness. And there are cheaper cars in the mid-sized crossover class and contenders that might tempt you with classier cabins or an extra row of seats. But if you can look beyond all that, there's much here to like beyond the cosseting ride. The spacious interior, the versatile back seat arrangement and charismatic finishing touches are all showroom selling points, even if the upgraded infotainment system still isn't. Overall, though, the updates made to this much smarter facelifted model are welcome, but even so, it's likely that this Gallic SUV will still remain quite a rare sight on our roads. Citroen hopes the availability of the plug-in hybrid technology we've been trying here may get this car onto the radar of likely customers in the mid-sized family crossover segment. Maybe so. Anyway, it's refreshing to see this Gallic brand getting back to what it does best. This car stands out as a result as it very much needs to.